Hi everyone, my name is Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP. In my last video, I explained synchronous learning and asynchronous learning and gave examples of what that looks like in my own classroom. In today's video, I want to share with you a reading lesson that I taught remotely to my own second grade students last week and explain how it would be considered synchronous learning and also asynchronous learning. As I mentioned in my previous video, teachers in my district use Zoom as a platform for online teaching. We begin every day of online learning just like we would in person with a class morning meeting. At 9.30, we officially begin our reading lesson for the day. And this virtual online live reading lesson taught by the teacher, me, to my students is an example of synchronous learning. And it's an example of synchronous learning because the teaching and the learning is happening at the same time for all of my students. I am providing, as, the, as their teacher, I am providing live virtual instruction. For the purpose of today's lesson, I am going to demonstrate what that would look like for an ELA reading lesson. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I would do is I would introduce the learning target to my students. And I would do that on Zoom via a screen share. I would share my screen with my students and I would first begin by state, stating the learning target. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this, there I'm sure is going to be a glare, but what I would display to my students is the learning target and have them repeat it with me. And it's okay if they're on mute. I think about what I am reading and I share what I am thinking with others. We repeat that again. I think about what I am reading and I share my thinking with others. Now this is a tricky one to do virtually and that's exactly why I'm doing this one in a video to you to hopefully give you some inspiration of how you can do this virtually with your own students. Because how are you supposed to share your thinking with others when you are doing this virtually and you're teaching this lesson virtually? I was thinking the same thing and I'll tell you exactly what I did. After stating the learning target to my students, I opened up and started to read a chapter in our mentor text. So right now we are smack dab in the middle of our Mercy Watson unit and we're reading all the books in this wonderful, beautiful, enjoyable series by Kate DiCamillo. And I began by just reading the next um, chapter of the book that we were currently on. I stopped, paused throughout that chapter and explicitly demonstrated what I was thinking as I was reading that part of the story. So for example, if I was right here in the book and I was reading this page, I would stop my reading and say, boys and girls, when I was reading this part right here on page 30, text evidence, I was thinking that Eugenia is not a nice neighbor. I know that because I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at what she's saying. I'm thinking right now she's not a very nice neighbor. I would then continue to read the next pages in the chapter, possibly go on to the next chapter, keeping in mind this is only a mini lesson, short, 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 and demonstrate a few more times of what it looks like and sounds like to think about what I am reading. So that was the first part of the lesson. As I'm reading, I think about what I'm reading. The next part of the lesson was to really dive into, and again, I'm not sure if you can see that exactly with the glare, is to share my thinking with others. And this is where we really have to be creative in how we can do that with a Zoom online teaching platform that we are using. So what I did is, again, live instruction, synchronous learning. I had my students, as I was reading another chapter out loud, I had my students appropriately use the chat tool in Zoom 
to write down what they were thinking as I read that the, the next lesson. So for example, I already modeled it explicitly for them. I would, I then started to read the next chapter and I invited the boys and girls, boys and girls, as I am reading this out loud, I now want you. So first I did it, now it's your turn. Now I want you to share what you are thinking about this page or this chapter with your friends and your teachers. And I want you to type in the chat what you were thinking as I was reading this page to you or this chapter. And then I did just that. I read aloud the next couple of pages. And as I was doing that, I heard, I um, saw my students as um, they were typing in what they were thinking in the chat. I saw their comments come up. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a co-teacher. So during this lesson, she was actually able in, again, real time feedback and communication, she's able to respond back to them. Oh my gosh, I thought the same thing, Kevin. Um, so she's able to respond back to those students in the chat. If you don't have a co-teacher, what you could do is you could, for example, when you're done reading that chapter or done reading that passage, you could read aloud. Or uh, you could read aloud what the students typed in for the chat, sharing a few examples of what they were thinking. Or you could have, and again, this would take a lot longer, you could have the students unmute and share what it is they typed in the chat about their thinking. So that would be the learning target. I think about what I'm reading and I'm sharing it with others with Zoom, the online learning platform. You could also extend this lesson into asynchronous learning time. So if that was our learning target that we did for the whole group core instruction, I would then say, boys and girls, now what I want you to do during your independent reading time, during your independent work time, now what I want you to do is I want you to get one of your own books because we did this together. I modeled it with our book together for our mentor text. I want you to, boys and girls, get your own book. Find your own book to start reading. And I want you to jot down one thing, maybe two things, that you were thinking as you were reading your own books today. Now remember, in my last video, I shared with you how if your students don't have access to hard copies of books, there are so many different awesome websites that you can go to where they have access to a plethora of digital books so that it won't be a problem where they don't have books to extend the lesson or any of these lessons that you're doing for reading. I would then, once it's the independent learning or independent work time, I would then put my students in the waiting room for Zoom and I would stay in that main session. I would call either individual students one-on-one -on -one and meet and conference with them and talk with them and have them share with me the book that they're reading, the title, the author, what they were thinking, or even in a small group format. So I could invite two, three, four different students into that main Zoom session and we could talk in a small group a lot easier with muting and unmuting in a small group or even using that chat still. Um, they could explain what they were thinking as they were reading their books. And again, the best part about this is that they're all reading a book that's just right, fit just right books fit like a glove. That's a lesson we previously taught. They're all reading appropriate books that are just right for them. So it doesn't necessarily matter that they are all reading the same book. They are choosing books that they want and enjoy reading and sharing their thinking with others. I sure hope that this video was helpful to you and please be sure to share this with another teacher friend that you might, um, that you think that they would find this information valuable, I would definitely appreciate that. In my next video, I am going to explain how I teach guided reading in a small group format virtually. In the meantime, please feel free to message me and email me with any questions that you might have. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.